Okay, cycling is difficult, it's painful, but how painful should it be? I want to give you a clear indication of the signs and symptoms that you should not be tolerating in your next cycle, whether that be indoors or outdoors. So from the eye of a bike fitter and a cycling coach, <laughs> I see and hear lots of problems. Foot problems, knee problems, ass problems, neck problems. Then there's the lung and the breathing problems. So let's talk about contact points, the three main ones. You probably know what they are, your saddle, your bars and your pedals. But I want to talk about the fourth contact point. Do you know what it is? I'll throw it on at the end of the video and make sure that you dial into that. Okay, so yes, your last cycle ride, you were crying when you saw that last hill, you were crying when it started to rain, you were crying when your legs were burning, you were last to the cafe. Or is that just my cycles? Or is that just Scotland you're talking about, coach? No, the thing is, cycling is difficult. Come on, it is difficult. And there are going to be aches and pains and you've got to tough your way through it. But there are things that are going on that you need to pay attention to because guess what? your pelvis and your posture are a little bit out. And they have been for years. Then you take up cycling and it's throwing you all over the place because guess what? Cycling does not require or demand equal loading through those antagonistic muscles. Muscles work in pairs, but some of them are getting more work on cycling. Imagine you treated your body like you treated your bike. I think most people come as close as maybe having a wash. You certainly don't do the upgrades to your body that you do on your bike. Oh, it would be great if I could just upgrade my legs though, coach. Cut off Chris Hoy's and attach them to me. You can't do that, okay? But what you've got to do is understand that posture and mobility are key. And if you're not doing it every day, you're going to be in trouble. So, come and find me on school or subscribe to this channel because you'll be getting lots of mobility and stability and posture drills as well. Anyway, why have I got the pelvis? Because as a bike fitter, we fit from the top down. What does that mean? Well, highest point is saddle, then we go to the bars, then we go to the pedals. If we start from the highest point and get the saddle correct, guess what? The margin of error increases as we go down. So when you've got that new bike and you've got your new shoes and your cleats, don't panic about the cleats. Don't panic about them first because you can't fit from the bottom up. No, you will just upset this key contact point where your ass is going. So hands up if you've got saddle sores or you've had them before, okay? They're all sore, you feel it on the inside of the pelvis. People have told you, oh, so you need to get some lubrication down there. Get some uh, Vaseline or Suda cream or rub something on there that'll give you just got a little bit of rubbing. No problem whatsoever. Da -da 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 -da. No truth, okay? Because that will help. But if there is a problem with your pelvis and a problem with the saddle height, you're not going to be able to fix that. So your stability drills, your hip drills, your glute drills every day. But your saddle's too high. 90% of people that come into my studio have got their saddle too high. And what that will do is it will tip and it will push out the stability of the pelvis. And it's working ever so hard. It will also possibly have a lean and it will reach on one side. That's no good, okay? Because that's gonna increase that pressure on one side. You don't get a saddle sore from that. Mm, no, but you get a bad back, don't you? You get a glute problem, maybe piriformis. So high saddle gives us a few key things. Knee pain at the back, hamstring insertion becomes very sore. Sometimes on the lateral side, okay, of the knee can become painful. The IT band gets sore because it's been stretched and it becomes inflamed and it becomes difficult for us. We try to stretch it, we foam roll it and we're screaming like a cat at midnight. Do they scream at midnight? I don't know, I just made that up, I think. But anyway, get your saddle lower. The saddle is the easiest thing to get wrong, but also the easiest thing to fix. Put it a little bit lower than you think to start with. Yes, there could be knee problems from there, but I would always start by trying to go low and go higher rather than high to low. Okay, type of saddle? Well, look, I've been cycling since the 1970s when everything was made out of plastic, yeah? But I've 
got a daughter, so it didn't numb things too badly. But what I mean is, the saddle type, it doesn't really matter if you've got it in the right height. Sure, a stumpy saddle's got the nose off, so you're gonna be able to fall off the front first, but you wanna be sitting at that 120 mark from the back. 120 millimeters from the back of any saddle is where you're likely to sit. You can measure this, your pelvis, Go and sit on some flour, go and sit on some talc, on a piece of paper. Don't put it in the living room while everybody's watching the family movie or whatever. Yeah, it's not good. And then measure the two circles that you're left with, centre to centre of those circles, those implants, those butt marks that you've made. If you're over 140 with those measurements, hmm, that could be a sign that you've got a Q-factor issue as well because you might have a big wide hip, okay? but Q factors for another point. That's the width where the pedal spindles are. Okay, so saddle type, stumpy. It's gonna put less pressure on the front, but if you've got the height correct, you're not gonna have a problem. Check out all the other videos I've got on saddle height. Just search it. I'll put some in the description. Okay, so after the saddle, we're gonna look at the bars. Now, the handlebars will often give people discomfort through their hands, maybe numb, pins and needles, sore wrists, we can get sore elbows, sore shoulders, a sore neck. Now, on the handlebars, I look for a couple of things. The first one is the chin, doing the breast stroke. So people stick up their chin as if they're doing the breast stroke. Now, I know it rains a lot around the world and other places, but no one gets as much as us. You're not swimming, you're cycling. But the reason you're sticking your chin up is because your bars are too wide. So as you put your hands out, your chin comes up. But by your chin coming up, this creates hinging through your neck, boom, not good enough. So if you've got neck problems, look at the width of your bars, a chromium to a chromium process, okay? Have them that way. Don't have them any narrower because that can put you in a time trial position. And a lot of time trialists, they will tell you as well, they get a lot of pain through the shoulders because they're going so narrow. If you're too wide, like you're on a Harley Davidson, yeah you're gonna have your chin all the way up here. So fix that in, bar width. Now also, your chin will stick up in the air if you're too long. So do the mummy test, sit on the saddle, and remember, sit on the saddle and don't force your hips forward so that you can reach the hoods. I've got lots of videos on that, but remember, it's just sit, hands out, lean forward. Where do you hit the hood? Do you hit it on the wrist? or do you hit it in the middle of the hand? No good. Fingers, no good, it's too long. Change your stem, bring the bars in towards you so that you can ride your bike with your ass. Yeah, with your ass. You don't need your hands, they're just guiding, they're just steering the bike. Remember, a bike over eight miles an hour on its own will go, it will balance itself. It's you that's upsetting the balance. So, bars, easy fix, yeah? Get them narrower. Get your hoods positioned as well correctly. Don't have them up so that you have this wrist that's forcing up. Now remember, another little test on the wrists. Do you have the L shape, okay? So when you grab your hoods, can you get them in a straight position? This L shape is stretching the nerves and giving you that tingling sensation. Yeah, that's simple. But I always do that, coach. Try not to. That's why dropping your hands there into the drops works. In the drops keeps your wrists in a straight position. I can't get in the drops because I'm not flexible enough. What did I tell you? Posture, mobility, fix them. You will enjoy your cycling more. Then we work our way down to our cleats. I would say everybody up with neutral position of cleats. That means no rotation. Okay, no rotation of the feet. Pull the cleats until you've got them centralized in the middle where the mat head is. Check last week's video that I did. I show you how to do the insole test. So measure your feet, paper, pen, measure the length, measure the width. Then take your insoles out of your shoes. Measure it against that foot. It's not your cleats that's the problem now, is it? It's your shoes. They're the wrong size. They're not wide enough. They're too long. Anyone that rides indoors should be undoing or unclipping their shoes if their feet get hot or numb. Every half hour, every 20 minutes, just undo them and let your foot breathe and then reshape the shoe around that expanded foot. Even on long rides, I hear there are countries that get sunshine more than a couple of weeks of the year. 
Oh, I do love Scotland, but please, sunshine. But if that's you, do the same thing. Try and undo, loosen the shoes as you ride, because your feet are getting bigger. Yes, yeah, just your feet, by the way. <laughs> okay, that's three contact points, nice and easy. Pains, ailments, you can fix them. You can fix them, but start from the top and work your way down. Get that saddle position correct and don't have it too high. Even though you think it feels okay, it's probably not. If you've got aches and pains, start with the saddle. It could cure everything. Right, what's that fourth contact point, coach? Your tires, your wheels. The pressure of your tire has a big implication on the comfort of the ride. Now, back in the 1970s, and especially in the 80s, you were laughed at for riding wide tires at 19 millimeters. Yeah, 19 millimeters. I once did Land's End to John O'Groats, all the way 19 millimeter tires. Between 110 and 120 PSI. I know, everybody had muscles on them back then from the pump that they had. Even a handheld pump, I can get it to 120 PSI. Now look, listen to me, this is important. Technology has advanced, but the roads have decreased, <laughs> especially in the UK. Use tyre pressure that's appropriate for the tyre you've got, the width of the rim that you've got, and the road that you're on. Changing the PSI on your tyres, 10, 15, even 20, can make a big difference to the interaction between you and the surface. And those vibrations decrease, that comfort increases, so less pain, more smiles. Hey folks, that's just a nice simple overview from a bike fitter's eye. If this video is giving you any value, hey, hit that thumbs up button. Have you subscribed yet? Please do that and share the channel with friends, okay? I was going to say share it with family, but they're already annoyed at you for watching so many videos on cycling. <laughs> you take care. And remember, anyone can train hard and anyone can push themselves, anyone can feel pain, but remember, there's only a few of us who can train smart. Stay safe, keep smiling.